Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From tusks that can pierce a skull to a stinger that will rip out their abdomen, here are nine dangerous animal body parts that can actually harm them. Number 9. Babirusa Teeth Babirusas, also called deer pigs, are found exclusively on the Indonesian islands of Sulawesi, Togian, Sula, and Buru. The most well-known among them is the North Sulawesi species, which is famous for the upward-curving tusks that males have, which pierce their snout and curve back toward their forehead. It's long been rumored that these overgrown canines can become long enough to pierce the animal's skull and kill them. The truthfulness of this claim was highly doubted for a long time, but in 2010, Darren Naish of Tetrapod Zoology pointed out that there is at least one known example of this happening. A reader named Henrik Peterson brought to Naish's attention a babirusa skull at the Museum of Natural History in Gothenburg, Sweden, that has a right tusk penetrating the skull. These extraordinarily rare instances probably only happen among very old babirusas. In a 2018 study, scientists identified more examples than they expected to find of tusks eroding the animal's frontal bones. They concluded that 12% of wild babirusas experience this and other tooth abnormalities that erode parts of the cranium. The team also determined that in some cases, the fragility of the babirusas' tusks spares some of these animals from incurring such damage in the wild. Veterinarians trim the tusks on captive specimens so they avoid these problems altogether. In any case, with everything that animals have to do to survive, it seems unfair to be impaled by your own tusk. Number 8. Short Snouts Flat-faced dogs, including pugs, bulldogs, French bulldogs, and shih tzus, have become increasingly popular in recent years. These breeds were deliberately bred to have certain cute features, like short limbs, big eyes, and a small mouth and jaw. But these characteristics make them prone to a host of health issues. Overlapping teeth lead to a higher risk of decay and gum disease. Heavy skin folds on the face can cause a condition known as cherry eye, as well as eye ulcers, which sometimes requires the eye to be removed. Flat-faced canines often endure difficulty eating and swallowing as well. They always seem to be out of breath and snort and sneeze all the time. Many of these dogs require cesarean sections due to the puppy's heads being too large for the birth canal. An overwhelming number of English and French bulldogs and Boston Terriers are delivered by C-section, and giving birth without human assistance would result in an excruciatingly painful death. Flat-faced breeds, particularly Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, are also prone to painful neurological problems resulting from their compressed skulls. The dog's shortened and narrow airways often result in a constant inadequate oxygen supply, leading to breathing and secondary heart problems. Brachycephalus syndrome is an alarmingly common ailment among flat-faced breeds. Caring for one of these pups can be very expensive, and they tend to live shorter lives than other types of dogs. Animal activists and veterinarians have criticized profit-driven breeders for knowingly breeding dogs that are highly likely to suffer from health problems. Some organizations and experts, including the British Veterinary Association, have encouraged the public not to purchase these designer breeds, which are often very expensive. However, a 2020 study on breed loyalty to flat-faced dogs found that people enjoy them for more than just their looks, with many citing their beloved canine companion's personality traits as a reason that they would get the same kind of dog again in the future. These dogs are amazingly affectionate and just overall great friends. While those who love flat-faced dogs adamantly defend their choice to own them, there is a growing consensus in the veterinary and animal welfare communities that we have a responsibility to breed healthy dogs too. Number 7. Sheep's Wool In 2015, an Australian citizen found a sheep with massively overgrown wool outside Canberra, the country's capital. The ship, nicknamed Chris, was so weighed down by his 18-inch coat that he could barely walk. If he had gone on much longer without being discovered, he probably would have died. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or the RSPCA, contacted national shearing champion Ian Elkins, who sheared Chris. The sheep had to be sedated for the procedure, which took over 40 minutes. Altogether, shearers removed 89 pounds of fleece, six years' worth, superseding the previous world record for the largest single fleece ever shorn by nearly 30 pounds. The wool is on display at the National Museum of Australia. This unfortunate incident served as a reminder that merino sheep can suffer from serious medical problems and have trouble when it comes to performing simple tasks, like going to the bathroom, if they are not shorn regularly. These domesticated animals depend on people to take care of them. Chris regained his health and spent his final years at the Little Oak Sanctuary in New South Wales before passing away from old age in October 2019. 
His caretakers described him as a sweet, wise, friendly soul in a post mourning his death. Number 6. Deer Antlers Late last year, Kansas Wildlife Parks and Tourism Game Wardens posted an image on their Facebook page of two dead deer with interlocked antlers. A Rice County resident had found the pair who apparently got stuck together while sparring. This is known to occasionally happen. It's far less common, but not completely unheard of, for more than two deer to be found with their antlers entwined. In November 2010, a forester in Ohio discovered three dead, submerged bucks attached together by the antlers. It appeared as though two of the bucks were already fighting when the third joined in, resulting in the tangled mess that led them into the water as they struggled amongst each other and ultimately drowned. When deer are discovered still alive with their antlers stuck together, life-saving efforts are often made to separate them. In some cases, rescuers have used chainsaws to free deer from each other. Earlier this year, Kansas game wardens responded to a call from a bow hunter about a pair of bucks who were joined at the antlers. The deer were still struggling and weren't very tired yet, so it was still too dangerous dangerous to approach them. Video footage of the rescue shows game warden Jeff Klauser using his gun to shoot one of the antlers, successfully freeing the deer. Number 5. Horse Hooves Hooves grow continuously, much like fingernails. Horses who live in the wild naturally keep their hooves short by roaming long distances. Domestic horses, on the other hand, need their hooves trimmed regularly to prevent them from getting too long. Overgrown hooves force horses to distribute their weight unnaturally, more or less by walking on the balls of their feet. This stresses the tendons and can lead to lameness and other serious, potentially life-threatening problems. The extent of the damage that overgrown hooves can cause made headlines in 2015, when the Maryland-based Days End Farm Horse Rescue took two neglected stallions into its care. Rescuers found them emaciated, surrounded by their own waste and unable to move, with three foot-long hooves. Although the pair were in critical condition, they were luckier than a mare who was euthanized at the property because her overgrown hooves caused a condition called fetlock dislocation. Her case was so severe she couldn't be saved. The veterinarian and farrier had to sedate the surviving two horses and remove portions of their hooves on scene in order to transport them safely to the rescue. It was reportedly the worst case of hoof neglect that the organization had ever seen. Miraculously, the horses, named Quest and Rio, fully recovered and were both adopted into loving homes where they will never suffer in neglectful conditions again. Number 4. Tortoise Shell when a tortoise gets stuck on its back, it is entirely possible that the animal will die if it doesn't get help. Those with more curved shells have a better chance at riding themselves on their own than tortoises with flatter shells, and smaller tortoises also have an advantage, since flipping back over requires less energy. A 2015 study delved deeper into the predicament to learn more about which tortoises are more advantaged than others when it comes to getting back on their feet. The research showed that large tortoises, particularly males, are disproportionately affected by this problem. When males fight each other, they attempt to flip their opponent onto their back, knowing this will snag them an easy victory. While larger tortoises are more likely to win, they are also more likely to become stranded if they land on their backs. Tortoises become stranded for other reasons, including illness, injury, climbing accidents, and bad habits. In the wild, too much time spent on its back subjects one to predators, the elements, and starvation. In the sun, they are especially prone to deadly overheating. When a tortoise lands in this unnatural and vulnerable position, they spend precious energy panicking. Sometimes their flailing is enough to get them back upright, and sometimes it's not. Number 3. Argali Horn Native to the highlands of Central Asia, the Argali is the largest living wild sheep, with full-grown males standing around 4 feet tall at the shoulder and weighing over 300 pounds. Both males and females have horns, which are larger among rams. The Pamir Argali, nicknamed the Marco Polo sheep, has the longest horns of them all, measuring up to 6 feet long. On the other hand, the Siberian Argali has shorter but more noticeably massive horns. Argali horns develop rings each year, which can help determine the animal's age. They use these horns to stay cool, defend themselves, and to fight each other for dominance. These enormous horns can cause severe injury but make quite the powerful statement. But just like with some other animals, these horns can grow improperly and actually hurt them by curling over and into their face or head. While this is not common, it can happen. In recent years, photographs of a dead Argali with its horn growing into its face has circulated on social media, sparking rumors about how the animal's own horns can impale and kill it. But just look at the tusks of the Babirusa. It would most likely happen slowly over time, putting pressure on the skull. Some commenters on Reddit have said that it looks like the horn was growing into the skull, but then 
Lynn was killed by a strong impact jarring the tip into something vital. The horn might have become slightly stuck in its face, but that the cause of death was most likely a hunter. The incredible horns of the Marco Polo sheep make them very attractive to hunters, and because they are endangered, you now have to pay around $20,000 to $40,000 for a permit. Number 2. Large Body Size while it's easy to think that large animals have obvious advantages over smaller ones, evidence shows that this is not necessarily the case. In fact, big animals are more prone to dying out. An estimated 60% of the world's largest animals are threatened with extinction, according to the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Past examples have shown that survival does not come as easy for big creatures and for several reasons. For instance, super predators of the past sometimes devoured their entire available food supply and went extinct themselves as a result. When prehistoric giants died out in past mass extinctions, smaller creatures then evolved to much larger sizes, thus becoming prime candidates for succumbing to the next mass extinction. For example, after the dinosaurs were wiped out, mammals became the next earthly giants. Climate change also played a role in past instances of size-selective extinctions, as Ed Yong pointed out in a 2016 article for The Atlantic. When temperatures warmed at the end of the last ice age, the landscape changed dramatically. Glaciers melted and forests sprang up, fragmenting previously open habitats. Droughts, changes in rainfall patterns, and other weather anomalies made the environment less habitable. A 2018 study argues that human activity puts larger animals at higher risk of extinction, pointing out the undeniable correlation between the disappearance of megafauna, such as woolly rhinos and mammoths, and the spread of hominids throughout the globe. This phenomenon dates back at least 125,000 years, and some experts even believe it started with our now extinct relative, Homo erectus, as far back as 1.8 million years ago. There are clear connections between megafauna extinctions and the arrival of humans and our close relatives, including Neanderthals and Denisovans, in places previously untouched by hominids. Research shows that the climate changes that encouraged our movement also led to the increased human activity that drove the populations of many large animals down to zero, such as hunting and habitat interference. Much like past megafauna, today's fragile giants like whales and elephants are less likely to survive against our destructive behavior than smaller creatures because of their longer gestation periods and lower reproductive rates and the great amount of energy it takes to raise their big babies. Number 1. Honeybee Stingers Most people would agree that being stung by a honeybee hurts, and for those with dangerous allergies, a sting can be fatal. But the exchange is always deadly for honeybees. When a honeybee plunges its double barbed stinger into someone's skin, it can't remove it. Consequently, it ruptures its abdomen when it pulls away, leaving behind not only the stinger but muscles, nerves, and part of its digestive tract. This is an example of a process called autotomy, which is when an animal defends itself by leaving a body part behind. But not all creatures who practice autotomy die from it. This may seem like an evolutionary disadvantage for the honeybee, but they are ready to sacrifice themselves to protect the hive even if it costs them their life. So why do they die when they sting, yet hornets and wasps don't? Some scientists believe that honeybees' nests are attacked more often, making suicidal defense more necessary for them than it is for other stinging creatures. For whatever reason, wasps and hornets can keep their stingers and can even sting repeatedly no problem. Unlike the honeybee, their stinger is not pulled right out of their body. Thanks for watching! Which thing did you think was the most dangerous for animals? Did any of these surprise you? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time! Bye!